welcome everyone of us. Today is another Sunday, another day to, to celebrate the, the goodness and faithfulness of the Lord. Please find your seat and make yourself comfortable. I hope and pray that you can join us from start to end of this worship service. Church, our text this morning is taken in Revelation 14, 3, 14 to 22. May I ask everyone to, to please stand in honor for the word of God. And you can join me. The text is on the screen or you can read it through your Bible. Revelation 3, 14 to 22. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, This thing says the Amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out in my mouth. Thus is the Lord. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are rich, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with salve, that you may see. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. As I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Let us pray. Father, Lord, thank you for your word. I pray, Lord, that you will guide us, lead us. Holy Spirit, minister to us that we will not uh, finish this service without being blessed, comforted, strengthened by your word and by your spirit. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may now be seated. If you read in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, Jesus did a diagnostic health check to the seven churches of Asia. But before that, let me uh, share to you the title of my preaching this morning. The Lukewarm Church. <laughs> the Lukewarm Church. So Jesus did a diagnostic health check, if you like, a COVID test <laughs> to all churches in Asia Minor. Jesus did not send an angel or a prophet to test the church or to check the church, but he himself came to check the church. Jesus, the, the head of the church, did a spiritual health check to the seven churches in Asia. So these seven churches are real people and real problems. Also, if the Bible will talk about churches, it is not about the building or a place. Because during the time, uh, Christians in the in the book of Acts, no, they have no building. But when the Bible talks about churches, it refers to all Christian believers. Amen. 
is all refers to Christian believers. Now, Brother Ray, what are the, the findings of the result of this uh, health check to seven churches? The results are some are positive, some are negative. But the one church who is not positive or negative is the church of Laodicea. In other words, the church of Laodicea is not hot or cold, but a lukewarm church. <laughs> I remember uh, last year when I had a COVID-19 test and the findings is uh, not negative or positive. They said they cannot find out. I don't know if there is a, a faulty testing uh, swabs or kits, but they could not find out whether I have COVID or or not. But later on in my blood test, uh, they discovered that indeed I had COVID and all the symptoms. But praise God, uh, the Lord spared my life and the Lord spared your life. And of course, those who are in isolation and in the hospital, we will continue to pray for them. We believe that Jesus is our healer. So the same to the church of Laodicea. To the other churches, Jesus mentioned some good things and bad things. Jesus mentions about rebuke. Jesus mentions some commendations. But in the church of Laodicea, there is no praise report. <laughs> There is no good news. The result of this investigation, all are warnings and bad things. This is so sad and dangerous. Why? Because the signs of a lukewarm church is almost the same as the signs of a dead church. The signs of a lukewarm Christian is almost the same sign of the unchristians or unbelievers. That's why I said this problem is so serious and dangerous. What Ibn Sadr, according to one author, is that this church describes over 95% of all the churches in the entire world today. Churches in a lukewarm state. It's sad. This writer said that 95% of the world churches today are lukewarm churches. According to his statistics, 10% of all church members cannot be found. 20% never pray, 30% never attend church, 40% never give to any cause, 50% never attend Sunday school, 60% never go to church or attend church events, 70% never give to missions, 80% never go to prayer meeting, 90% never have family worship, and 90% never have won a soul for Jesus Christ. This is a sad news, isn't it? Most churches today, according to this uh, author, are lukewarm churches. How many churches don't have Bible studies or prayer meetings, especially this pandemic? During the first lockdown, they padlock the church and people are not allowed to gather. What happened to those Christians who are lukewarm? What happened to those Christians who are not strong in their faith? Lockdown is a perfect opportunity for them to be inactive, to continue in their lukewarm state. For example, I know a uh, a huge church, big church in 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 Sussex, 
But sadly, they never meet physically since the first lockdown last April. Could you imagine almost one year without meeting, fellowshipping, without seeing your pastor, your your brothers and sisters in Christ, one year attending Zoom meeting, and how many people are attending the Zoom meeting? Those huge churches. I received an information that not not good attendance at all. Those youth churches, their members are disappearing or not attending the Zoom uh, Bible studies or Sunday service. This is a worrying state of the churches of the world today, especially during the pandemic. But my question is, do you belong to a lukewarm church? <laughs> How is your church? It is lukewarm, it is hot, it is cold. And how about you? Are you lukewarm Christian? Hallelujah, praise God. This is the question to all of us this morning. Are we lukewarm Christians? Church, the Lord desired the believers to be always on part. Amen? If you read the book of Acts during the, the formation of the church, believers are gathering daily in prayer, in, in fellowship. Yeah? They, 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 they sold their possessions and give it to, to the poor, give it to, to the brethren who are less fortunate. You can see the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah? They, they do evangelism. They, they share the word of God. There are signs and wonders. Indeed, it is an active, alive, on fire church. This is my prayer that Sussex Outfits, LSF Church, will be a church on fire. Amen? A church on fire. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I thank the Lord for so six outfits. You are still there. You hold on. Amen. Although we are not meeting physically, you are there. Praise God for your faithfulness. We are the church on fire. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is in us. Now, this morning, I will give you Four signs of a lukewarm Christian. Remember that uh, when the Bible talks about the church, the Bible is not referring the, to the physical building, but it is referring to you and me. It refers to all Christian believers. So what are the signs of a lukewarm Christian? Number one, in your screen, lukewarm Christians give their lip overs not their first and best. <laughs> I remember in the Philippines when the pastor visited uh, uh, members of the church who who has piglets, 12 piglets. And uh, the, the pastor said, uh, good morning, brother. Uh, I saw the, the piglets, no? Indeed, you are blessed with piglets. How many piglets do you have? Uh, my brother, my pastor, praise God, uh, we are blessed with 12 piglets. Okay. Yeah, I saw 12 piglets. And how many you will give for the Lord out of 12 piglets? <laughs> the pastor asked the, the brother. Pastor, yes. Uh, out of 12 piglets, I will give one piglet for the Lord. In the pastor saw the 12 piglets and one piglet in, in, in isolation. And, and the pastor said, which one is for the Lord, my brother? And the owner of owner brother of the piglet said, that one pastor in the corner. And the pastor saw that this piglet looked disabled. <laughs> looks 
disabled. And this brother is not giving what is best for the Lord. Church, the Lord gave his best for you and me. He gave his life for you and me. Lay down in the cross. Jesus gave himself for us. God the Father sent his only begotten son. He is not sending his prophets or his angels, but his only begotten son. God sent the best and we received the best. Will we not give the best for the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Also, when it comes to our time, there are seven days in a week. And we have only two hours church service. That is 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. How's your time for the Lord? Are we giving our time for the Lord? Most of the time, some Christians cannot, sadly, they cannot attend service. They cannot give even two hours of their time of the week. Sometimes they go to the church, but sadly, they are also late. <laughs> they are always absent. When they go to church, it's late. Are we giving our best for the Lord? Let's God give thanks and clap or pray for the Lord because you give your time this morning. Amen? You are not late and you are present even in our live streaming. Praise God. The Lord is blessed by your life for your faithfulness, giving your time for Him. So number one sign of a lukewarm Christian, they don't give their best for the Lord. What they give are leftovers. What they give are the second class or third class. Church, again, we need to give what is best for the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that is number one. Number two. Lukewarm Christians think about life on earth and becomes carnal. So there is one man who live in a comfortable life. He has big house, nice car, beautiful wife, beautiful children. He said, I wish I never grow old. <laughs> he said, I wish there is no death. Church, carnal Christians are not excited about spiritual things. Carnal Christians are not excited about eternal things. They are excited on temporal things. Some Christians even uh, treat the church as a social gathering. Not a, a worshiping believers. I remember when we are in Heward Seat in Sussex, there is one church there that before we start our Bible study, there is a separate room of retirees and they have this ballroom dancing. <laughs> so they came there not to worship the Lord but for uh, social interaction. Church is designed not for social gathering. Not to entertain you, not to 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 please people. We go to church to please God. Amen. We go to the church to worship God, to honor God. There is one writer who said, "For the lukewarm Christian, corporate worship is social and strategic." It's place to see friends, share your frustrations about politics, and maybe even schedule a business meeting or two. So, church meeting or gathering for these lukewarm and carnal Christians are, are just mere social gathering instead of a worship gathering. 
So second uh, sign of a lukewarm Christian is the thing about life on earth. No, and uh, they become more carnal. They're concerned of the fleshly desire rather than spiritual things. How's your desire right now, brothers and sisters in the Lord? Are your desire are focused fully on eternal things, spiritual things? Or your desire is focused, hook up on worldly material things? Let's examine ourselves. But I hope and pray that we will fix our eyes on Jesus. Amen? We will focus our desire on the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three. Lukewarm Christians rarely share their faith. Like Charles Spurgeon, he said, you either a missionary or an impostor. How long have you been a Christian, brothers and sisters, in Christ? How many people you shared about Christ? How many people you lead to Christ? The Lord is not concerned about his statistics, but our heart as a Christian. How's our passion for the lost souls? How are our love to other people who are lost? Church, let's share our faith. Let's share Jesus. Let's share the gospel starting in our family members. Don't say, oh, pa, brother Ray, uh, can I volunteer to be a missionary in Africa, in the jungle of Africa? I want to do a mission trip. I'm so excited. I want to book a ticket now. <laughs> Don't go to Africa first. Brother, preach, share the gospel to your wife, to your husband, to your children, to your family friends before going out. Anyway, the Lord will send other missionaries in, in Africa and other parts of the world. But our mission is to start sharing the gospel, praying, Planting the seed of prayer to our family members. Amen? Hallelujah. Are you praying for the salvation of your loved ones? Are you praying for years and nothing happened? Don't give up. Don't give up. Pray, pray until something happened. Amen? Pray and pray until something happened. Nothing is impossible to God. Pastor, my... My, my husband is so notorious. No? I think he has no chance of salvation. No. Sister, as long as he's alive, there's always chance of salvation. Keep praying. So a seed of love. So a seed of prayer. In God's own time, you will see there is a harvest. There is a harvest your family and friends will receive salvation to Christ. Amen. Shall we give offering for, for Christ? Hallelujah. Praise God. So lukewarm Christians rarely or never share their faith. Number four, lukewarm Christians love their luxuries and rarely give to the poor in a truly sacrificial way. The church of Laodicea, the city of Laodicea is a rich city. In Roman in Empire, Laodicea is the center of banking and finance. It is a rich city, a city that in AD 60, when the city was devastated by a, a strong earthquake, the central government in Rome want to extend a financial assistance to rebuild to rebuild the city. But you know what? The city of, of Laodicea said, no, we don't need assistance. 
we have sufficient funds to rebuild the city. Could you imagine how rich Laodicea during the time? No, Laodicea is also proud of their medical school. No, they produce an eye drop called salvi or salve. It is uh, an eye drop that can heal uh, something itchiness or any blindness no, uh, from the eye. So it is, uh, they say it is a miracle uh, working eye drop. And Laodicea is producing this, this, this product. No doubt, Christians in Laodicea are wealthy. So among the seven churches in the book of Revelation, Laodicean Christians are super rich. <laughs> Praise God. But you know what? God give them a warning. If you read in Revelation 3.17 in our text uh, earlier, in verse 17, Jesus said, Because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, I do not know that you are rich, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Jesus is warning them that the danger of wealth. Amen? The danger of wealth. The danger of wealth is it gives us the, the danger of losing our love to God. We substitute wealth no, instead of God. Also, in, in, in terms of wealth, there is also a danger of pride. As if you don't need God anymore. You know, when Jesus said it is very impossible to save a wealthy man. Why? Because they trust on their wealth rather than God. So wealthy people, they have money, pain, pleasure. They have everything they need. Why they need God? That's why Jesus said, your wealth. No? Wealthy Christians. I am warning you. You are in great danger. Amen? Have you prayed, have you prayed to get rich but no answer? <laughs> Who among you here uh, prayed, uh, Lord, uh, give me riches. Lord, I want to be wealthy. Lord, I want to own the, the Tesco, the Sainsbury. And all the shops in, in London. Uh, how many of you is praying? If there is no answer, God has a purpose. Of course, he knows the danger of wealth. So the same warning to the church of Laodicea are the same warning, warning to the present day Christians about the danger of losing their love and devotion to the Lord because of riches. Anyway, Church, we don't need riches. Why? God provides. Amen? We are sufficient. We lack nothing. God is faithful. Even in times of pandemic, God is faithful. As I said earlier, all or 99% or all of our members in Sussex, I give glory to God, did not lose job. Maybe one or two lost job, but the the Lord give them another job, even much better job. Amen. Can we give glory to the Lord? God is our provider, and the Lord will continue to provide our needs. Have faith, have trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. When it talks about wealth, I said, Lord. If you want me to be rich, so be it. <laughs> I, I don't like riches for my personal 
aggrandizement or my personal pleasure. Lord, give me provision so that I want to be a channel of blessing. Amen? Do you want to be a channel of blessing? How many pastors in the Philippines who who, who lack in in their in their finances? How many pastors' kids are cannot go to school because uh, they lack provisions? How many orphans in the streets? How many widows, elderly? around us. My prayer is, Lord, make me a channel of blessing. Yes, it's good to preach the word of God, but if you share the love of God in action, in giving, it is another message. Amen? If we share the word and we share God's love through giving, wow! It is powerful. So we are not only preaching according to our lips, but we are demonstrating what we preach. We are demonstrating sharing God's love through giving. Yes, if the Lord wants me to get rich, if the Lord asks me, you want to get rich? I said, yes, Lord. But make me a channel of blessing to other people. Hallelujah. Praise God. Next is four simple ways to go from lukewarm to on fire. Christian. Are you lukewarm at the moment? And you want to be on fire Christian? The code is. Or. The pattern is. CMDC. According to one uh, evangelist. Light yourself on fire with passion. And people will come from miles to watch you born. <laughs> Light yourself on fire with passion. And people will come from miles to watch you born. I remember a uh, few years ago when I first came to London. I went to Hyde Park Corner. One Sunday afternoon. And do you know in Hyde Park Corner... There is so-called the uh, preacher's corner. I saw different religion, different churches, evangelists preaching. And there is one preacher surrounded by another group of people from other religion. And they are mocking him. That is not true. But you preach that Jesus is God. Oh, Jesus is not God. They are mocking, they are laughing, almost hurting this person. But they continue to preach and share the gospel in Hyde Park Corner. Wow, I'm so amazed by the passion of this, this evangelist. And I said, Lord, Lord, give me that passion, fire in me. I'm a Christian, but I am not sharing my faith. You know what? Uh, the Lord granted my, my, my prayer. The Lord God did my prayer and the Lord put in my heart the passion for the lost souls. Since then, I, even in, in Borges Hill, in, in London, Tube Station, the Lord, glory to God, used me to preach in the streets. There are some people who are threatening you, mocking you, but I said, Lord, you died for me. Lord, you are, you are my protector. Lord, I will continue to preach the gospel even it will it cost my life. When the Lord brought me to Tooting LSF Church, I volunteered as a street evangelist. Wow. Glory to God. The Lord used your servant even to lead the whole church to go out from Two things, church. We went to the tube station, to the streets. The whole church doing evangelism. <laughs> wow, the, the part. Passing on the part. So, simple ways. From lukewarm to old fire. Number one. 
confess your sins. But before that, although there is a, a strong warning to lukewarm Christians, there is also good news. What is the good news? Jesus will not allow you to remain in your lukewarm condition. The Lord will ignite your passion this morning. The Lord will revive you and me this morning by the power of His Holy Spirit. Lighting the match. How to go from lukewarm to on fire. Number one, letter C, confess, confess your sin. What makes one lukewarm is because of our present personal sins. Do you agree with me? What makes us a lukewarm Christian? Number one is because of our present personal sin. I invited one of my cousins way back in the Philippines to attend a church service. And he said, no, sorry, I cannot attend in my church because I'm still smoking. I'm still drinking. When I stop smoking, <laughs> he said, when I stop drinking, I will go to church. So what hinders him to come to Christ is his personal sins and, and vices. So sins and vices loses our appetite to God, to God's word, and to believers' gathering. I remember uh, one professor uh, said in the seminary, make sure your account is always current to God. Church, we need daily check whether we are in sin or not. Ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, are, 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 am I in sin? So, Lord, what are the sins in me that hinders me in coming to you? Remember that when we sin, the tendency is we we retreat. We 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 don't want to 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 go to God. We escape. Amen. The tendency is we hide. Like Jonah hiding in the in the ship, in the bottom part of the ship. Why? Because of his disobedience. Confess your sin, repent, and ask the Holy Spirit to deal with it. If we read in First John 1 John 1.9, if we if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Church, yes, the Lord knows that sometimes we are lukewarm. Sometimes we are spiritually low. It's normal and natural. But you know what? The Lord said, just come. Just come in humility. Repent your sin. Whatever you sin, just cast it off. Give it to me, and I will forgive you. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that is number one. Confess your, your sin. Let's make sure that we will give an account to God daily. As the Holy Spirit exposed it, repent and confess your sins to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Church, confession of sin will lead us to revival. Confession of sin cleansing our conscience, cleansing our hearts. Wow. It will revive our soul. And I will tell you that you will, not, you will never stay in a lukewarm 
in a lukewarm state. Hallelujah. Praise God. Next is, number one is confess your sin. Number two in your screen. Meditate the, the word of God. Meditate the, the word of God. Remember that when you become lukewarm, when you read the Bible, when you share the gospel, when you internalize what you read, you will be revived. Could you imagine if you are a Christian, you did not read the word of God for one week or months or a year, what will happen to you? I will tell you, you become spiritually weak. You become lukewarm. You become lukewarm. Church, the word of God is powerful in correcting, in, in rebuking, amen, in, in encouraging. The word of God is the food for the soul. Joshua said in his word that we will meditate the word of God day and night. Just like our physical body needs food every day, so with our soul, it needs feeding, spiritual feeding. That's why I encourage everyone, all of us, to have a personal devotion. Reading the word of God. You will say, oh pastor, I don't have time. Oh pastor, I'm busy, I have kids. I will tell you that if that's your excuse, you will not have no time to read the Bible. <laughs> God give you all the time. Just find a perfect time and place to meditate and, and, and read the word of God. Hallelujah. Don't read the word of God while you're feeding your your child or while you're doing exercise but find a place and time especially early in the morning less distraction that's the perfect time when you read and meditate the word of God so the word of God will revive our lukewarm soul one way that uh, also to to meditate the Word of God, I, I'm inviting you to attend our prayer meeting and Bible study every Thursday. This time we are studying the, the book of Acts. So I'm inviting you to join us. This is one way that will deliver, deliver us to become a lukewarm Christian. So number, number three. So meditate the word of God. Number three is devote yourself in prayer. Amen? Devote yourself in prayer. Colossians 4.2 Devote yourself to prayer being watchful and thankful. Amen? Daily prayer and meditation is powerful. Prayer is you are communing to God. You are receiving also the power and press anointing of the Holy Spirit in your life. It will revive your soul. Believe me, a prayerless church is a powerless church. And a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Prayer is vital, important to keep us on par, strong in the Lord. Without prayer, it makes us lukewarm and weak spiritually. Hallelujah. Praise God. So 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 5 minutes, even 3 minutes prayer when you are too busy is very important. Praise God. I hope I declare 
that Sussex Church is a prayerful church. Amen? Sussex Church is a prayerful church. And Sussex Church is a powerful church. Why? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Burning. Give us, giving us flame and fire. Hallelujah. In our heart and mind. Number four is commit yourself to fellowship. The reason why why some Christians are lukewarm, the reasons why some Christians are weak, because they don't avail themselves to fellowship. If you are a Christian, you need a church. You need to commit to a church. You need commitment to fellowship. Amen? Oh, Pastor, I, I'm a Christian, but I, I don't belong to any church. Oh, Pastor, I'm a Christian, but I don't want to attend Bible study. I don't want to attend prayer meeting, but I'm a Christian. <laughs> Praise God. If you are truly believer, you will commit yourself to fellowship. I remember one time in a uh, few years ago when I am new in the UK, I'm I'm in the Bible school here in London and I read the word of God, I study the word of God, I digest the word of God. I attend uh lectures about the Bible, I pray, I meditate, but there is lacking in my heart. And I said, Lord, uh, tell me, there is missing, lacking in my heart. Now the Lord uh, impressed in my heart, my son, you lack fellowship. Why? Because I don't have a church. I visit from one church to another church. I am not uh, committed to a certain uh, ministry. Uh, I don't have commitment at all. And this is what I feel. I feel emptiness. I feel something lacking in my heart. That's why I prayed, Lord, give me a church where I can serve you, where I can, I can share your word, I can fellowship one another. And praise God, God brought me to LSF to think church here in London. And there, my spirit was revived. I will tell you, this is true. My spirit was revived. And I became useful for the Lord, even in simple things and little ministries to start with. And that gives me more uh, strength as a Christian. That Revive my soul and my spirit. Are you Christians and you are not fellowshipping, attending Bible studies, prayer meetings? I will tell you, you will be in a lukewarm state. You will be a lukewarm Christian. Are you not involving yourself in, in any ministry? You are just go to church and hear the word of God? Yes, it's good, but I encourage you to fellowship and to get involved in church works. There you can find contentment, satisfaction, joy in serving the Lord. Although there are some uh, serving the Lord is not easy. There are some uh, trials. There are some uh, sometimes prostrations. But you know, the Lord will encourage you and will lift you up. Find where you belong and pray where you can be useful in the ministry and it will revive your soul i will tell you it is guaranteed hallelujah so that is the last church before i'll end this message let me ask you this question to reflect how's your spiritual life are you a lukewarm christian are you hot or cold Or are you becoming lukewarm Christian? 
How's your relationship with the Lord Jesus? Church, I encourage you to make a spiritual U-turn back to God if you are in a backsliding state. If you lose appetite about going to church, hearing the word of God, attending fellowship, you are in a backsliding direction. I ask you to make a U-turn back to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus loves you. He gave himself for you in the cross. The greatest proof of God's love in your life is he gave yourself for you and me. There's no question about God's love. How about our love to God? Are we serious about our commitment? Are we serious about our devotion? Our, our service to the Lord? Let's examine ourselves. Let's examine ourselves. Also, what are the things that make us a lukewarm Christian? Personally, although I mentioned several examples, but you personally, what makes you a lukewarm Christian? If you are a lukewarm Christian, let's get rid of it and let's ask the Lord through the power of His Holy Spirit to help us to be set free from all these distractions that hinder us in coming to Christ, in serving Christ. Church, the Lord is speaking to you right now. Come back, my son. Come back, my daughter. Draw close to me, and I will draw close to you. I will repress and satisfy your longing soul. I will uphold you in my right hand. I, In times of troubles, I will repress you and satisfy your thirsty soul. This is the voice of the Lord inviting you to come back to Him. Be revived. Be repressed by His Spirit. Hallelujah. I understand sometimes we as Christians, we become lukewarm spiritually. spiritually. But if it is still the same Lukewarmness for very long time, it is a serious matter, I will tell you. The Lord wants us all to be on fire all the time. The Holy Spirit will give us a fuel. I'm afraid that prolonged lukewarmness is a sign of a dead spirit. Lastly, let me share to you about the vision of Prophet Ezekiel. In the book of Ezekiel, God brought Ezekiel to the valley of dry bones. The dry bones are scattered, broken. There is no life on it. And God said, look Ezekiel, what have you seen? Dry bones, my Lord. And Ezekiel noticed that there is light, there's no light in that dry bones. But you know what? When God breath his breath these dry bones came to life these dry bones became a living being alive church if we are in a lukewarm state our life or spirit is like the dry bones there is no life on it we need the refreshing the breath of life, the refreshing of, of the Holy Spirit to revive us. Are you in a state of lukewarmness right now? Receive the press anointing of the Holy Spirit. Receive the touch of the Spirit right now. Receive the reviving touch of the Lord. Receive, receive, receive the Holy Spirit and you will be revived. Dry bones no more in your life. Dry bones no more in our churches. Dry bones no more. Lukewarmness no more in our lives. Church, we will be a church on fire. 
you will be a mother, father, on par in the Lord. This is my prayer and declaration to all of us. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you that in our lukewarmness, Lord God, your love remain the same. Thank you, Lord, for reviving us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a fresh anointing. Fresh touch. Thank you, Lord, for igniting the, the fire in our heart, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are backslidden, but now we are revived, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you will continue to touch your people. Thank you, Lord. Those who are lukewarm, those who are uh, backsliding, in Jesus' name, Lord, that they will come back to you. They will worship you. They will honor you. Thank you, Lord. They will devote themselves in prayer, in, in fellowship, in holiness. Thank you, Lord. And our life as a Christians will never be the same again. Thank you, Lord, that starting today, we receive that holy fire, fire in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, that we receive that Revival. Revival starts within us. It starts in our hearts. It starts in ourselves. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that the life of your people, the life of your church, will never be the same again. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your thoughts. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you are reviving us. Thank you, Lord, that you are setting us free from this lukewarmness. Thank you, Lord. We become, came alive in you. Thank you, Lord, for your fresh touch, fresh manner. Thank you, Lord, for your holy presence. To keep us alive, burning, on fire for you now and in the days to come. I declare blessing to every family, to every couple. I declare blessing to the church in Sussex and even lords in Tubod, Sibonga, church in the Philippines, that the same fire anointing, Lord God, be upon them in Jesus' name. And to all the churches in the world, I pray, Lord, that, Lord, we will not stay, remain lukewarm, but, Lord, revive on fire because of the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Church, for joining us this morning. I hope and pray you are blessed and encouraged, ready to face the challenge this week. But praise God that the Lord is our strength, daily strength. Also, I would like to invite once again, to attend our Bible study every Thursday, 7 o'clock in the evening, UK time. Also, our worship Sunday service live next Sunday, starting at 9 o'clock. Join us. And also, if you miss the, the preaching this morning, visit us in LSF Sussex TV for more videos videos thank you church i hope and pray that you have a blessed week week may the lord bless you and keep you may his face shine upon you now and in the days to come god bless all mm -hmm.